Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to shoot a quick video that's not a review, but is sort of an explanation of Levy Saber. Levy Saber is becoming a lot more popular lately. For quite a while it was one of those pieces of apocryphal knowledge. To my knowledge, I was the second person to start doing it. The first was a guy called uh, Flow Warrior, who's a really excellent flow artist. Um, but uh, these days, there's a lot of levy sabers on the market from a company called uh, Flow Flow Throw, I think, or Throw Flow, one or the other of those, um, that are getting it out there so that people who have been seeing these videos forever and saying, oh my goodness, that's that's some sort of sorcery. How on earth are you doing that? For a while, we were all sort of tight-lipped about, well, I guess you just got to figure it out. But now the information is out there, so I figured it was uh, it was time to cover it a little bit. So before I get into Levy Saber, let me start off by talking about Levy Wand. This is a Levy Wand. Okay, specifically, this is a fire one, so these two wicks get lit on fire. All right. This is a carbon fiber shaft, and in the middle of it here, there is a hole drilled, and this is what's called Shadow Cord. It's made by a company called Dark Monk. Uh, Shadow Cord is a flame-resistant, very durable black cord that in low-light settings, if it's in motion, is practically invisible. So it's a really nice way to go about this. Okay, now there's one piece of, uh, of misconception about levy wands. This hole is not drilled at the point of balance. If I hold this thing by the cord, this white end right here marks the top, but this end weighs more so that when I let go of it, it's going up and down and I can basically dance around with it. If I want to flip it, I can, but it comes back to this thing being at the top. So uh, Levy Saber, or Levy Wand rather, came from an old magician's trick called the floating cane or the dancing cane. And so the idea basically was uh, the magician would have an invisible string of some kind attached to the cane and they'd do a hat and cane routine and then they'd let go of the cane and it would levitate and float around. Now, the flow art community got a hold of this and created levy wands which are very popular because they're pretty dang easy to use. And you watch people out doing contact sword and contact light or contact staff and that's stuff that takes years to master or even to get proficient at. Levy saber, just about anybody can actually pick up a levy saber and make it do something. Um, I actually, my sister-in-law uses them as team building in corporate America. So, um, so yeah, Levy Saber is pretty easy to use and, or sorry, Levy Wand is pretty easy to use. And this is where it comes from, the idea of a Levy Wand. All right, when you do that with a lightsaber, the uh, point of balance is a little bit different. You can string it above the point of balance or below the point of balance, but a lot of people string it right on the point of balance or very close to. That has to do with the angle of the saber that's going to, or the angle of the rotation as the saber is thrown. I like to have it just off the point of balance because it makes the saber easier to catch. In order to make a levy saber, the process is very, very easy. You figure out where you want to attach the cord. Okay, this is a relatively light um, apprentice model from Ultra Sabers, so very cheap, very low. Uh, low technology install, so it's just batteries and an LED. So it's really, it's it's what I would suggest people get if they're planning on Levy Saber because you're throwing it around and there's some trial and error. And this thing will probably come back and hit you a couple of times or fly off and hit a tree. If it's gonna probably hit you, get something that's light because if it's a heavy Saber, it's unmanageable. It's more likely it's gonna hit you. And if it does, it's gonna hurt a lot more. So something like this is a fairly, good way to go. Okay, figure out where the point of balance is with the blade in. Now, point of balance is basically where does it, um, where is it that you can balance it on your hand? You mark that and somewhere near there, uh, either slightly above, below, or on, you attach the cord. If that point of balance is on the hilt itself, you can attach it to the hilt itself. A simple slip knot is an easy way to go, especially if there's a groove or some such thing that you can attach it to. If it's up on the blade, what I've done here is just drilled a little hole in the blade. This is fishing wire. This is actually three strands of fishing wire that I braided. You can use black nylon cord. You can use uh, shadow cord like what I had or like what I was showing you on the levy wand. Um, the advantages of the fishing wire in high light situations, 
the fishing wire will glisten a little bit, but is harder to see. Whereas in full sunlight, the uh, black cord would stick out very easily. The bad thing about the fishing wire is that when the saber is illuminated in a low light situation, it picks up some of the light and drags it off the saber. So the cord actually becomes easier to see because it's glowing. So you'll have to choose whether you want to use black or whether you want to use clear. There's advantages to both. But basically what I did here is I drilled a hole in the blade. This thing had blade film in it, so I had to do that carefully. I put the fishing wire through it and I secured it with a very secure knot on the other side. All right, that basically means this will not pull out. Okay, this technique that I use means that if I plug it through and I want to adjust the distance, all I have to do is pull it out, wrap it around, and tuck it into itself on the other side. And let me see if I can get this so that you can see it. Basically, I wrapped it around and tucked the knot into this so that when this thing is pulled, this secures it. Okay, this will come loose. It won't slide all the way out, but it will come loose if the line is slack. But most of the time with levitation saber work, the line is hardly ever slack. So I can adjust the distance just by continuing to wrap the blade. All right, on the other end of this thing, I've got a little plastic fob. Now again, you can get these from Dark Monk, you can get them from a bunch of different places, but that is a swivel. You need a swivel so that the, blame, or so that the cord doesn't get all bound up, and just a little rubber thing that fits in my hand. Okay, the idea behind the uh, Levy Saber is this hand is controlling it, and this hand is catching it. So I want my distance to be such that while this hand is attached with the thing, or attached to the, uh, to the full fob, I can pull it into my other hand and catch it. It's got enough room to fly out and be free, but it's close enough that if I pull this back, I can catch the saber. All right, the advantage of having a fob system like this is I can actually pass it from hand to hand while I'm throwing the saber. So if I throw it with this hand, while it's out, I can pass the fob from one hand to the other, and I can catch it with this hand. All right. Catching it in mid-rotation is something that you kind of got to get used to. That's what makes it more difficult to do levy saber than it is to do levy wand. But again, it's a fairly straightforward process, and the, uh, the process of making the levy saber is really low-tech. Basically, you're putting a string on a saber. Highly recommend a swivel. You don't really even need the fob. You can just go with a loop, but the fob makes it easier to pass it off from hand to hand. Okay. At or somewhere near the point of balance makes it easier for you to be able to catch the saber with the hand that's not holding the fob. All right, so basically that's all we're looking at with a, uh, a basic quick and dirty setup for levy saber. This isn't all that there is to it. This is not the method that I started using when I started using levy saber. I actually used what's called a long string levy wand or a long string levy wand setup, which is a more complicated creature and harder to use but you have a little bit more or a little bit more mobility to do some farther ranging tricks. I'll eventually do a video on that as well. But if you're interested in something like a go th or a flow throw saber, um, this is basically what the setup is. If you want somebody else who knows what they're doing to do it for you, then by all means, talk to Christian Castro or a couple of the other people who've got those things. Um, but if you if you want to tag or if you want to tackle it on your own, then basically, cheap light lightsaber string something to grab onto, you have a levy saber. After that, it just becomes about learning how to use it. All right, uh, figured it was time to share that with you guys and hopefully you have enjoyed or benefited from it. I expect to see a whole lot more flying sabers floating around out there, floating around out there. Um, at any rate, have fun with it and I'll see you next time.